Hey, what's going on, Callum? This video is of my new 2023 Yamaha Exciter 155. I literally just picked it up from the shop. It's about to go over to SMS uh, Sakal Motorsports to get modded up, get the suspension tuned, add some, you know, little accoutrements that I picked up for the bike as well. Yeah, you know, I wanted to give you a look of what the bike looks like right out of the dealership. Welcome to this episode of Small Bike Stuff. This is the beginning of my Around the World series. I would love to travel to every country that has small bikes today and go see every single small bike that ever exists. But we've got to be realistic and as far as logistics go, that's just not possible right now. So this is a call to anyone out there. If you want to see your bike on Small Bike Stuff, I have a really easy template video to follow. Get in touch with me on Small Bike Stuff Instagram, uh, which is Small Bike Stuff IG, or Facebook small bike stuff flick me a message and I will send you the template video you just got to do a few basic clips here like Dana has done in Bangkok Thailand and flick them through to me I'll watch those clips live here and react and let everyone know a little bit more about your piece of the small bike world all right let's get into it this is Dana's 155 Yamaha Exciter from Thailand all right so Callum this is my 2023 Yamaha Exciter 155. I just picked this up the other day. It's got maybe 40, 50 kilometers on it so far. I just rode it out to Tumbury and back. So this is the newest version of the bike. You might remember this used to be a 150. They've since upgraded the engine, 155. Awesome, well let's just start there and we'll pause it on a nice clip of the Yamaha Exciter 155 sitting there in Bangkok in Dana's driveway or, or townhouse front, I guess is what you'd call it. This is an incredible bike, it's 155cc, it's a single overhead cam, uh, it's a four stroke single cylinder, uh, four valve head and it's water cooled as well. So you've got a bore of 58 millimeters and a stroke of 58.7 millimeters, a compression ratio of 10.5 to one. And it puts out about 17.5 horsepower at about nine and a half thousand RPM. So it's a pretty impressive bike, fuel injected. They run a 90, 80, 17 tire front and a 120, 70, 17 tire on the rear, which we'll get into. All right, let's let Dana take us around this machine. And he's got it in the wonderful sleek kind of black with gray with blue accents. I really like this color. I just just rode it out to Tumbury and back. So this is the newest version of the bike. You might remember this used to be a 150. They've since upgraded the engine, 155. A classic underbone, six speed transmission, great Yamaha engine, all around fantastic thus far. Right now the bike is 100% stock. That's incredible. Can you imagine having just picked this thing up from the dealership? Because this is not realistic for me here in New Zealand. It doesn't have ABS. Um, that means we'll never be able to get it brand new here in New Zealand. When that's 20 years old, I could import it. Or if I owned one of those overseas for a long time and then came back to New Zealand, I could probably bring it. There's a few different kind of clauses there for importation with New Zealand motorcycles, but it just really looks so good. Oh, I won't interrupt. Let's get Dana back into it. And I'll be bringing it to the shop today to get modified. I'll give you another video after it's modded up. So let's take a look at the... Uh, the engine here. This is that 155. You can see it's, it's got a fairing, so it's kind of blocked. Not much we can see. Six speed transmission. My first bike ever with a uh, center stand, interestingly enough. Great tires for, uh, for an underbone. Really big fatties on here that, you know, just give you a ton of traction. Really feel great on the road. Mono shock in the back that's getting swapped out for a YSS. Wow, okay, so he's already got plans for this thing. And as you would, uh, I'll put the price up of what this thing costs in Bangkok now in Thai baht, and you can just chuck that into Google and, and ch change it into your own currency. But I don't think I mentioned it was a six speed. If I did, I didn't elaborate, but yeah, six speed manual. So you've got a one down, five up. Uh, you've got pretty fat tires, which this thing, didn't, I mean, if you're talking about big motorcycles, of course, they're, they're quite small, but as far as underbones go, there was 125 Sonics, you know, back in the late 90s and the early 2000s that had 17-inch wheels in this kind of shape, but they really didn't have the, the thicker 
rear tire, which is awesome. You've got a lot more meat there available to kind of keep you on the road. So I really love this thing. And it's rare that you get to see one in stock form as well in English language being presented on the internet because they are mostly sold in countries that don't speak English as a, as a main language. I'll be throwing a tail tidy on this as well, uh, just to clean up the back a bit. Pretty comfortable seat, but I am probably gonna have it uh, swapped out with a gel seat uh, just for comfort traveling. That makes entire sense, changing that seat for, for long distance travel. They're often quite hard and um, when you know, when you're a bit heavier set as well, and not just like a 60 or 70 kilogram, five foot five dude um, living in, in Southeast Asia, you you generally tend to um, want a bit more cushioning is probably the most polite way to put it. So it's really cool to see uh, the first impressions for Dana on this bike. He's obviously only had it a really short time and yeah, so far I'm absolutely loving it. Pretty basic controls. So this one's all digital. The 150 used to have a uh, analog tack, which I really liked. And it has a shift indicator, which the MSX didn't have. So it tells you what gear you're in, whereas the MSX only ever told me I was in neutral. I'm just gonna pause it there with the whole dash in view. If you look at those controls, he says it doesn't have many, but I mean, compared to say an old FX125 from the early 2000s that I've ridden a lot before, that's pretty good. You've got the pass option on the lights on the left side, that main toggle switch there. That means you can just tap that down and or flick the high beam to make other people in front of you hopefully see that you want them to get out of the way or just warn them of, about something. You've got your turn signals there, your horn on the left side as well. And then you've also got uh, the kill switch on the, on the top right there. But then the one thing that's interesting is it's got hazard lights as well. So you can flick that on or safety lights and it turns both of your turn signals on at the front and both at the back all at the same time. And so you will be, you know, able to park on the side of the road and, and make sure people can see you, I guess. But yeah, I really like that digital setup. It's much nicer than a needle. Um, reliability of it going forward would be interesting, but I, I really like how it looks at this point. Hazards on this bike as well. Very decent styling, kind of sporty. Let's take a look at the wheels and the uh, calipers up here on the front. Great mag wheels, which is, uh, go, there we go. A little bit wider on the lens. Great mag wheels. And while he's got that wide shot there, we can actually look at the radiator. So the nice aluminium or aluminum if you need it in freedom units. There's a, a wonderful cooling system on this bike, which means that you're not just stuck with like a Honda Waves horizontal liquid oil cooled, not liquid, just oil cooled system, oil air cooled system. It's you know got a lot more capabilities of keeping the engine cooler on a longer distance ride, I would say. Great mag wheels, which I love. I'm not a fan of the spoked ones, which you, you tend to see here quite a bit. Yeah, small calipers, standard Yamaha calipers, but they do the trick for this bike, though I might be swapping those out in the future. So yeah, pretty basic uh, Oil setup. Like I said, unfortunately, you get the fairing here, so we can't see Oil too much of the right. engine. But we can see enough to see it's purdy. Passenger pegs, and then you know, the rear, uh, mm. rear caliper there. Variable valve uh. actuation. Honestly, not even sure what that is. I have no clue. On the rear swing arm, normally this is sort of centered, but for whatever reason on, on this exciter, it's off to the one side, which is, is interesting. Here's my <laughs> random soy cat, Nong Sam, who comes and hangs out at our house. Nong Sam, say what's up. Not keen. Not, okay. Not today. We'll see it again when it's all modded up. Oh, let's take a look at. I gotta pull my little blue sticker off here. Open up the seat. Anyway, just take a look under the seat. Pretty basic. Fuel tank. Uh, there's a couple mods out there for a seven liter. Seven liter tank would be amazing, but while he's pointing at that under seat area, I think it's quite a good shot to show one of my things that I've become so accustomed to with the Honda Wave, which is. Uh, it doesn't have fuel, it doesn't have any underseat storage, sorry, and I do have uh, uh, 18 litres of underseat storage on my bike, which is incredibly useful. I know that he probably will put a top box on the back of this and um, maybe like a spine rack in the middle there to, to hold some other stuff, but um, I really love these bikes and think they're amazing, but for me, in day-to-day -day use, you want some easily accessible space. Top boxes are okay, but they're a bit finicky and just opening 
your seat, putting stuff under there and closing it is um, is awesome. But yeah, taking out that tank and putting a seven liter tank in, this would be a touring machine. To replace this, so I may do that. But other than that, uh, you know, zero storage. Uh, I might be able to fit like a couple stickers. I got a, like a little multi-use uh, screwdriver here. Might be able to fit my owner's manual <laughs> under there, but that's about it. That is about it. A Yamaha Exciter 155. Pretty amazing thus far. You can see the, uh, the MSX back there. I'll be doing another video on that soon enough. And like I said, I'll give you an update on this one when it when it's ready to go, when it's all modded up and good. I'm bringing it to the shop now, get the suspension tuned with a YSS kit, front and rear, and add on a few little bitty pieces. This shot's really good because you've got the MSX there in the background and he's just told us what uh, modifications he's gonna do, a YSS um, suspension kit and a few other things and some sliders and all that kind of stuff. Seeing the Grom in there, you kind of almost feel sorry for it. You know, how can it compete with, with this thing here? But it's um, done some incredible adventures. And that Grom in the background does have 14 inch wheels. So it's had a few different swaps, a few different modifications along the way. Um, it'll be interesting to see what use the Grom brings Dana after having the uh, Exciter 155 join his life, because I know he's planning to keep both bikes. So yeah, a really incredible bike. Um, let's see if there's anything else Dana has to say. All right. That's it, Callum. <laughs> okay, that was it. That's it, Callum. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Small Bike Stuff. I hope you learned a little bit more about the Yamaha Exciter 155. This is the brand new model that's available in Thailand right now. If you go to a Yamaha dealership and buy an Exciter 155, this is what you'll get. Dana was saying that there was only one color available. This was the only color that he could get. They usually come in a blue as well, which is quite cool, but I really have fallen for this darker color. And the brochures uh, didn't really look as good, I think, and then you see it in person here or on video and it's a really cool bike. So if you want your bike to be featured in this Around the World series, all you've got to do is uh, get in touch with me on social media, Instagram or Facebook, flick me a message. I'll give you the template video and that way you know what to film and you can get it to me and uh, maybe we'll see your bike on YouTube on Small Bike Stuff very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Small Bike Stuff. We'll see you next time.